Hey guys, I'm just uh, wiping some tears out of my eyes after watching that last episode of What If. Oh, it was so good. It was so joyful. I really enjoyed watching this episode. I, I really can't break. I'm trying to try to break it down. You know, I usually like to break the good, the bad and the ugly of the episode. But I don't know. I don't know if there was anything that I could say that was really that bad. It was just so great to watch. But I'm going to start off with the good. It's, it First of all, I got to say that I grew up reading how books and I grew up reading what if stories. So this series is just amazing to me. I never thought something like this will come to mainstream media where people can enjoy multiverse stories. You know, as a fan of the comic books and a geek, this is something that I thought would never exist. So to see it happen, but within the MCU where there's flipping certain stories around for the MCU and this particular one really hit hard because Chadwick Boseman passed and this is basically his last time performing as T'Challa. And they put a little interesting twist on it. They made it that if T'Challa was younger and if he got abducted by the Ravagers from Guardians of the Galaxy instead of Peter Quill and became Star-Lord. And I thought that was such a unique idea to do because I never would have thought of that to choose T'Challa to make sure he's not even the Black Panther to see what would happen if he went into a different direction. And the things that they did in this episode in terms of what his personality is and how it would affect the Ravagers was the most interesting part to me. The fact that they weren't pieces of crap anymore because of the way his personality is and how he was such just a naturally good person. And it, and the way they did that, it felt like it was a celebration of Chadwick himself. Even though it was T'Challa, I feel like they were celebrating the actor that played the character because he was such a good human being. He's because he wanted so much for everybody. So he got a lot of personality out of, of, of Chadwick in this performance out of T'Challa. He was very charismatic. I think this is the most charismatic the character has been live action or animated in a while. And because he wasn't being, you know, all serious all the time, he was being a little bit more explorative and fun. We got to see of the fun side of the character. He wasn't worried about holding down an empire and or being king. He was just worried about exploring the universe. And I thought that was a very interesting hook. And then the episode just kept going, and it was just the, the dynamics between T'Challa and the rest of the Ravagers was really fun. So, so we got to see other Guardians and how their lives would be if Chadwick, no, sorry, not Chadwick, um, T'Challa was in it instead of Peter Quill, and how one simple decision that he made changed, changed basically changed the course of that timelines in the MCU. No Infinity War, no Endgame, none of that would happen based on this episode if T'Challa was Star-Lord. You know how everybody, you know, hates Peter Quill Star-Lord because of what he did in Infinity War because he feel like he made a stupid mistake and caused basically the end of the world. T'Challa's in the character in this episode does the exact opposite. And we get uh, cool cameos from, you know, Drax uh nebula but in a different way you know, and it's seeing how she would be different we get thanos in this which surprised me i was watching this episode on the train and i was looking around like wait what i did not expect that to happen and having josh brolin come back and voice the character was really dope because he does he she's brings um something to the character i don't know what it is but he brings something to the character that's really great with his voice and uh, we got Howard the Duck. You know, he's been teased in the MCU. He was in one of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, I think the first one, with the Collector. And then I think he was in the lineup in Endgame at the end when the portals were opening. So, and he was used more here. That was fun. And the Collector came back as well. And he was the main antagonist. And the, the, the everything was, there was nothing too serious. These, I've noticed in, from the Captain Carter episode to this, it's just all fun adventures so far. Putting a little twist on the history of the MCU and seeing what fun we can have with that. And it's a good break from all the seriousness. You know, Wanda Vision was dealing with a lot of serious topics. So was um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And then Loki was this grand, epic, universal, variant thing going on. And obviously this show is a direct result of that show, uh, what happened at the end of that, that series. But it's just so much lighthearted. It's so much fun. It made me feel like a little kid watching it again. And I hope 
everyone gets to experience that. I know that it's animated, so it might turn some people off, but I think you should definitely give it a chance. Let's move on to the bad. The only negative I can think about in this show is that it moves really fast and the episode is so short. I think it's about 34 minutes. And this is such an interesting idea and it brought up so many interesting dynamics that I wanted to see and so many relationships that I would want to breathe a little bit more that I wish it was an hour long or at least 45 minutes. That's what all the other... Uh, Disney plus Marvel shows have been but this was really short it was it was jam-packed with a lot the episode was moving at a crazy pace it felt like a, a, a Guardians Galaxy movie crammed into 34 minutes an animation form that's great because the characters can move quick um, action can be done really well and really fast because it's not real people but I wish that we got more it made me want more and knowing that the next episode is not going to be these characters is going to be a different scenario disappointed me a little bit so i could see some people being left unsatisfied because of that also with that quick pace it might lose some people because if you're not someone that is tuned into everything that's happening with the mcu or you know haven't seen a garden and galaxy movie in a long time you might not understand some of the things that are going on um in, in the episode, you, maybe you even skipped the Guardians Galaxy movies and maybe the first time you saw them was in Infinity War. Uh, so for casual MCU fans, this might throw them off a bit. But I overall, I really enjoyed this episode from the, the, the action, the chemistry between all the actors and all the characters in the show, all the little twists that they did with lovable characters and antagonists that we know. And... The story arc that T'Challa had, even though it was 34 minutes, we I feel like we got a full story arc with the character because he was the main focus. They didn't really divert too much away from him. I thought that all that was great. I think this is, I recommend this a lot. I think overall, I'll give this episode a B. Uh, let me know what you think about the episode down below. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to check out my next video. Uh, share it with your friends and you can watch more right now.